In this video, we are going to use Gauss's law to uh, derive the electric field inside a solid cylinder at a distance d away from the center of the cylinder. So, first step. Identify the symmetry of the charge distribution and draw the appropriate Gaussian surface that touches the location where we want to find the electric field. So the symmetry is cylindrical, which means that our appropriate Gaussian surface is going to be a coaxial cylinder. Meaning that the axis of my Gaussian cylinder is going to have the same axis as the cylindrical charge. And we want that Gaussian coaxial, coaxial cylinder to touch the location where we want to find the electric field. So here is our axis for the cylinder. And we want to find the electric field at a distance d away from the center of the cylinder, but inside the cylinder. So that means that my Gaussian cylinder is going to uh, kind of nest inside the charged cylinder. So the wall of my Gaussian cylinder is going to be a distance d away from the center of the cylinder. And it's going to be symmetric around that axis. So a distance d above, a distance d below. On each face of your Gaussian surface, indicate the directions of E and A. So similar to the previous example, the electric field is going to be upwards at point D. And the area vector is also going to be upwards. And that's going to be true everywhere along the wall of the cylinder on the end caps, the right and the left end caps. The electric field vector is also going to be up, but the area vector is going to be pointing to the left and to the right. Meaning that the flux through the left and the right end caps is going to be zero. And we're only going to have flux through the wall of the cylinder. Calculate Q enclosed, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So how much charge resides in here, in our Gaussian surface, in that little cylinder inside the big cylinder? Well. We know the charge density, so that is rho. So rho times the volume of our Gaussian cylinder is going to tell us the charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder. What's the volume of this little Gaussian cylinder? Well, the volume for a cylinder is the area of one of the ends of the cylinder times the height of the cylinder. So the area of one of the ends of our cylinder is pi r squared. And r, in this case, is distance d. Remember, right? The wall of the cylinder is distance d away. So that's going to be pi d squared times the height of the cylinder. And we'll just call that distance L across. So there's our enclosed charge. Rho times the volume, which is the area of the circle, times the height. So pi d squared times L times rho. Calculate the net electric flux through all faces of our Gaussian surface. So the net flux through, well, the flux through the left side is equal to the flux through the right side. 
which is zero. And then the flux through the wall is going to be E times the area of the wall. And the area of the wall is uh, again, you could think of this cylinder, the wall of the cylinder. You want to find the surface area of the wall of the cylinder. Just pretend it's like a piece of paper and you're unfurling it. That gives us a rectangle. That gives us a rectangle. The uh, height of the rectangle is L. And the length of that rectangle is the circumference of our Gaussian cylinder. So that is going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is d. So this area is l times 2 pi d. So l times 2 pi d. And then that means that our total net flux for the entire surface is just 0 plus e times l times 2 pi d. So that's just going to be el 2 pi d. And then our last step is to uh, equate the flux with the enclosed charge of epsilon naught and solve for e. So we have our electric flux from here, which is E times L times 2 pi D. We're going to set that equal to our enclosed charge over epsilon naught. And our enclosed charge we found previously, that is rho times pi D squared times L all over epsilon naught and pi's cancel l's cancel one of d's cancels and then solving for e we get rho d over 2 epsilon 0 which is exactly what it said at the very beginning Great. And you're probably wondering what this circle is. I'm really sorry, I forgot that this is supposed to be a side view of our cylinder. So that means that if point D is a distance D away inside the cylinder, right, and we're looking at this from the side view, or a cross-sectional view, our Gaussian cylinder looks like that inside where the electric field is pointing outwards everywhere and so is the area vector for the wall and we're seeing it in profile here okay hope that makes sense